بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We concluded with ثم كان من الذين آمنوا وتواصوا بالصبر وتواصوا بالمرحمة and then being among those who believed and advised one another to patience and advised one another to compassion so this uh, is like a heads up freeing a slave food feeding needy miserable orphans without faith is useless so you have to be amongst those who believe for you to benefit from what you're doing because without faith all of, all of the good that you do in this life is fruitless as allah azza wa jal said وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا And we come, we will come on that day to all the days, all of what they've done and we'll make it like blown dust, useless, right? So without faith, regardless of what you do, you won't benefit. So freeing the slave and feeding the needy and the miserable and the, and the orphan and all of these good deeds are of no benefit until you have faith. And also looking at it from the other side, doing these things whilst having faith is an indication of true and strong uh, faith. Allah Azza wa Jal always coupled uh, acting righteously or performing good deeds with faith so that people will always be mindful of the fact that these two are interconnected they cannot be separated at all in Islam but then added and uh, Allah Azza wa Jal added to that وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ so it's not enough for the Muslim community at large for individuals here and there just doing uh, good deeds they have to uh, advise one another to remain patient on this path on the path of righteousness and the path of faith because man has the tendency of weakening and softening right okay so I spend this month and then I spend the following month and then 10 months down the road I might start losing juice right I might we start weakening if I don't have someone a fellow Muslim coming and advising me enjoying good making me remain strong in what I'm doing and continue on this path, I might stop. This becomes more dangerous when the issue is talking about faith is itself. You know, that's why the Prophet ﷺ said that the wolf will only attack a sheep that's alone, right? Outside the flock, when, 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 he, when it sees it alone, it's easier to attack that than going into that with the guard, the dog, right? So it just takes that that secluded itself alone, right? And was grazing alone and just attack it. So a believer alone will weaken in his own faith, not just the righteous deeds that he performs. So Allah Azza wa Jal is encouraging this process of advising one another, strengthening one another to be patient and persevere on the path, whether it is pertaining to faith or pertaining to uh, righteous deeds. Uh, and advise one another to compassion, to be merciful. Again, 
a rich person might weaken, but you remind him, you advise him, you remind him with the reward he will attain by being merciful to these orphans, to these needy that are the two types mentioned in the previous two verses, who, whom Allah Azza wa gave as, as examples to feeding, right? The orphan and the needy. Advising them to continue to be merciful and compassionate towards uh, these, these types of people will be a factor, a strong factor of those who are feeding, who are spending, who are compromising their own uh, goodwill, uh, sacrificing their own goodwill for the sake of others, uh, to continue on that. Uh, and Islam always encouraged mercy. And there is a very beautiful hadith in uh, the book of uh, Al Imam Al Bukhari warning people from not having mercy. And it's narrated by Jarir ibn Abdullah, the Prophet وسلم, said, لا يرحم الله ما لا يرحم الناس. Allah will not be merciful with the one who is not merciful to people. So you want mercy? Be merciful to people. As the Prophet ﷺ said in another narration, "Irhamu man fil ardi, irhamkum man fil sama." Be merciful towards those who are on uh, on earth, yani in this dunya. The one above the heavens will be merciful to you. Meaning, Allah will be merciful to you. Ulaika, Allah continues to say. Those are the companions of the right. Those who apply all of that, those who do all of that, right? Who pass that obstacle, that difficult pass by feeding, freeing slaves, and doing all of these good things while maintaining faith and advising one another to persevere and be compassionate are the people who will have their book or will receive their book with their right hands. Uh, and what more would anyone want other than to receive his book with his right hand? Because this, as we said in, in the explanation of different surahs, this is an indication that it is an eternal bliss from here on. Alas, he has the result already known to him. Then Allah Azza wa Jal goes to talk about the other uh, type or the other side. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا هُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ عَلَيْهِمْ نَارٌ مُقْصَرٌ But they who disbelieved in our signs, those are the companions of the left, over them will be fire closed in. Allah Azza wa Jal, when started to talk here about the disbelievers or those who rejected the miraculous signs of Allah Azza wa Jal, those signs which they were able to see with the eyes Allah granted them, right? Though they thought no one is seeing them, but they were granted the eyes to be able to see and evidence is established against them. Allah didn't go on to give details by saying, oh, these people were the ones who did not free the slaves, who did not feed the needy, who did not care for the orphan, because it is enough evil that they disbelieved. Because this belief is the head of all evil. And anything else under that is minor comparing to disbelief. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran over and again says Allah Azza wa Jal forgives all sins, but does not forgive that we set partners to Him or associate partners to Him. In Allah, la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Allah does not forgive. You commit shirk. You associate partners with Allah. 
and forgives anything under this. Anything. It's up to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah Azza wa Jal started the sentence saying, and those who disbelieve, that's enough. No details, no further details are needed uh, to describe these people. It's enough that they denied the signs of Allah. It's enough that they rejected the greatest sign of Allah Azza wa Jal, this miraculous Quran that they could not deny nor bring something the like of, uh, of which, right? They denied the message of Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam because as we said there is nothing that can benefit them when it is with disbelief when faith is negated when faith doesn't exist do anything you want it's not going to avail you it's not going to help you it's not going to be of any benefit or any fruit for you on the day of judgment now what happened the nature of your life was hardship, difficulties, right? At the end now, nothing is benefiting you. You struggled through your life. But then, what's going to happen? What's the consequence of this obstacle which you refused to strive to climb and pass? Allah says, the consequence is عَلَيْهِمْ نَارٌ مُؤْصَبًا Over them will be fire closed in. The scholar said, its doors will be closed. They will be imprisoned in hell. They will never come out of it. And they will never enjoy the feeling or the feeling of uh, grief, tightness, and uh, pain will never depart them. Uh, and this description in itself makes your heart and your chest tight. When you, as one of the scholars of the Salaf said, I swear by Allah, had it been that Allah Azza wa Jal threatened me to imprison me in a room, just a room, eternally, that would have been enough punishment. You know, if you're behind four walls and there's no exit out of this, for a month, you lose your mind. It's on, if it's only a month, you would lose your mind. Literally, you'd lose your mind. If you're, if you're being imprisoned, alone in a room that has no windows, no doors, and you know that you're not coming out. You would lose your mind. You will start off talking to yourself and then you lose your mind. So he said, if Allah did not threaten me, that my punishment will be anything beyond a room in which I will not, or from which I will not be able to come out, this would, be, this would have been enough for me as punishment to work to avoid and struggle to avoid. So how would the case be when Allah Azza wa Jal is saying they will be in a fire, they will be in a fire with closed doors, no way out, they will not be permitted to go out, the punishment of it is very painful, it's diversified, whenever it becomes or they start feeling that they will get accustomed to it, it becomes intensified, the form changes and by changing the forms, and the intensity of the pain or the heat or the type of punishment, this makes this punishment so painful that human mind cannot perceive it. We ask Allah's protection from all of that. So this will be the consequence of those who go through this life, the nature of which is hardship, without faith and refuse to accept faith. With this we conclude this surah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us among those who take their books of deeds in the right hand and protects us from being of those who take it with the left hand. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahumma hamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka.